I'm so happy that I decided to do this reaction because I had no idea there was going to be two episodes of this as well. Sure, this is can't be the end of the season. I mean, episode eight. I think there was about 16 episodes in season one. So whether this is a treat, I don't know the reasoning behind it, but. I like the fact that it leads on perfectly into another episode and there was a great cliffhanger there which I would have quite happily waited all week for and thought about it but no, I don't have to even do that. I can wait two minutes and we're there already. So like I said, speculation, is the Emperor going to turn up? Maybe, but I would say the Emperor would turn up more so at the end, end of the season or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's sort of wishful thinking but I think it's going to get very juicy. I really want to know what that trooper was the, the believer the one that killed himself and what that's all about it's opened up a whole new storyline as well and are they creating new troopers one thing as well i've been watching clone wars again as one does and i got to the zelo beast episode and at the end i always thought the zelo beast survived and something happened to it turns out the zelo beast died don't know why i thought that but then palpatine's like i want to clone it at the end of the episode, what happened to the Zelo Beast? You want me to clone the beast? Did it get cloned? Is there more Zelo Beast? I'm assuming nothing because they never quite worked out the armor, but that would have been a pretty interesting episode or sort of follow up to that. Um, that Palpatine actually did something with that and uh, created something invincible. And that would be really cool if there's sort of payoffs in the Bad Batch, just to know that these things are linked even more. But it's just a completely random thing. And I was just started wondering about it as well. But my god, I love the Clone Wars so much. You'll regret that. It's always brought me so much enjoyment. And, you know, I had that in, well, we all had that when we were younger. But now we get to have it when we're older. You know, hopefully more wiser and a different perspective on things. You get to appreciate it to a whole new level. And Bad Batch is sort of reminding you of those younger years, but it's making you see it through the eyes of, you know, an older self. And the whole Amiga thing, looking after someone. Yeah, I really like that whole dynamic. To see the consequences of everything which happened in the Clone Wars, and now this is the world that was being created in Bad, Bad Batch. It's, yeah, it, it makes you feel like, you know, when you see Obi-Wan Kenobi and all the Jedi with the lightsabers and they're doing all these adventures, slashing around and using the Force, and you think, it reminds you of your sort of youthful years, you know, so, so carefree, and, and now Bad Batch is <laughs> very serious, and uh, not that, and that's the oppression of the Empire. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's a really cool um, transition anyway, but that's what I love so much. Speculation this episode... Um, obviously the Bad Batch are going to be in there and meet up with Rex and but will they travel to Kamino? That would be really cool. I like to think the Kaminoans, uh, they live somewhere still. There's still some of them sort of dotted around or some of them were, are still kept by the Empire because they we know that they they attempt to clone in um, in various forms as well. One thing, this is a very, very out there theory, shall we say. Do you think we would ever see Starkiller? Do you think you'll be canonized uh, in the Bad Batch? Because if it's going to happen, now's the time, uh, Commander. Uh, it should happen in Bad Batch, surely. If there's some sort of reference or something like that. And, uh, you know, Sam Witwer. I mean, it's, it's, it's obvious. It's just when I was thinking about the Believer... And he had his theme, I was thinking, oh, just imagine Starkiller, just on a rampage in the planet. And we see him before he, you know, turns good and everything. And uh, knowing that Vader's got an apprentice out there, because, you know, Inquisitors became a thing. So why not uh, Starkiller? That would be so awesome. Such a nod to the Force Unleashed. That would just be completely amazing. You know, I would respect that greatly. But anyway, let's get into this episode and enjoy. No idea what that is. Maybe we're not going to cars on them. <laughs> it 
Is this Amiga going to be the first Jedi clone? Trying. Angie taught. Hey boys, any chance I could use your squad's expertise for a mission? Finally, I'm tired of waiting around for Sid. So casual and, and happy. Oh wait. Rex makes it seem so simple with that tone of voice. On the Coruscant. I was completely taken over by the Empire, but not to worry. No biggie. Just a simple extraction. Data extraction. It looks so good. It's almost starting to look like it's, it should be a movie. Live action. I'd love to see some Imperial starships just looming over just reminding everyone you can't enter the senate district without an imperial security clearance that will not be a problem then let's get to work you just think of it as a take your daughter to work day on an imperial senate we serve the galaxy oh you are <laughs> the voice of the you seem surprised to see me admiral not at all Yes, I sent in the preparations for tomorrow's vote. Legislation, where the future of the galaxy is decided. Pretty awesome, awesome still. <laughs> That's all I see. <laughs> Which one? Clones do not have representatives. They never have. You keep a secret. Yes. I'll never get bored of seeing Coruscant. Senator Bertone, thank you for coming. It'd be awesome if the Venator there is actually being fitted out to be an Imperial Star Destroyer. And that's what they're doing to it. How many have you reached? Not that's enough. so cool. Troop were spread pretty thin. Oh. But the fact that they're waking up to knowing what they did, what they've done. <laughs> yeah, that'd be so me. Wrecker with heights. Which will most likely signal the security breach. Well, they're gonna turn the Venator on. Basically. And the whole thing lights up. Some more TIE fighters now. Why don't they just fly and stop while they still the bridge? Maybe that's one. Another happy landing. And they just gotta trace the whole thing through through Coruscant. See how many buildings they can knock down. And those hallway scenes now are so. So I got it to Darth Maul's whole scene when he's using the force. Oh, there, there we go. <laughs> nice camera work. I was off by six point four meters. Not my best. I do like to. Now that's the imagery which I'm looking for. It's now Imperial looking. Unless you want to tell us now where those funds went. Oh, um, yeah. About that. This is where Crosshair shows up. Military His own ships caused the destruction of Tupoka City. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. An awesome hologram, man. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, man. <laughs> this is exactly what I said. <laughs> that music. Here, the assertions are correct. This 
unprovoked attack on Camino was a cowardly act. Stay back. Palpatine said it again. I am deeply troubled by this recent And it's Ian McDermott. I assure you, and so rampart will face the That's never been stronger. The clones under his command so blindly follow orders. Inflicting such carnage without hesitation. A strong galaxy requires protection and security. Due to the affair. On the floor today, it is my opinion that this legislation is our future. With this momentous act, we shall usher in a new era, heralded by the Imperial Stormtrooper. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. <sighs> that was brilliant. Oh my, I need to rewatch that. That music. Palpy. He's so good. Deserves to be Emperor. Senate approval for his stormtrooper program. <laughs> He's not good, no, is he? Get into trouble with that. But he's part of the bad bitch. I mean, I suppose you have to, but... Ever. We can't leave her and go. That's another less... crew member... in the bad batch. Lost crosshairs, now they've lost Echo. And Rex has gained... Hopefully, Cody. Well, there. I'm so happy with that episode. It was the fact that I didn't even realise it was going to be an episode straight after seven. Episode seven, you know, is good enough. But that just felt so jam packed with goodness. And you had, you know, all the action, you had the politics, and then you had the Sith <laughs> at the end. It was just so great. And how they brought up Palpatine as well. And it, that sort of weird bell. And then everyone sort of looking down, knowing who's about to show up. Perfect. It's, that's literally how I, I sort of wanted the Imperial Senate to operate, everyone to be in fear of of the Emperor. And the fact as well that he still he still has the cunningness of Palpatine. He still sounds evil. He's, he's not he's not hiding I don't know, it's just so perfectly done. It did make me wonder how how they're gonna show the Emperor sort of leading the Senate. Is he gonna be like Palpatine a bit? But he just clearly, you know, manipulative and acting like a perfect Sith Lord. Doesn't care about anyone who gets in his way, who uses many people as he needs to, to accomplish his goals. And even just to, you know, get rid of Rampard like that as well, just fell straight into his, into his hands, basically, with these. That's just perfect. Like, it was so good. The fact that it's voiced by Ian McDermott again as well is just brilliant. I love that so much. Um, and see, always hearing him and seeing him play the Emperor it was brilliant, even when he played it, Palpatine in that sort of vision hologram in Rebels you know, that was probably the last time we see the Palpatine character persona um, but yeah so great, so perfectly done there's that perfect level of creepiness eeriness uh, and spectacular delight as well um, when he appeared, so I think it was really good, and ushering it in, the Imperial Stormtrooper, I mean, freaking hell, that, that's absolutely amazing how they went about doing that, it was so nicely done, it made it like one of his speeches from Revenge of the Sith, and, and creating that whole cause, uh, to create the need for them, uh, it's just, yeah, 
Perfect. That's what I love so much. I think this show is very clever. The more and more we progress with Bad Batch, the more and more I like it. The first season was very character-driven. And now you love the characters. And now it's expanding into the big characters and the big themes. You know, and Echo going off with Rex now to hopefully, you know, plan things with Cody and all the other clone troopers who are remembering what's happened. That's a really, really good storyline. Whether that leads up to some sort of battle or something like that. Also, Crosshairs, he's still, you know, still about. And are they going to try and get him back on the Bad Batch squad? Because they're essentially missing someone now. You know, there's three, well, four of them, including Omega as well. I mean, she is part of the squad. But um, sort of warrior level, you know, they kind of need Crosshairs back. Um, so hopefully there's that's going to happen soon hopefully that's still on the cards and on the table there because i'm very much voting for him to come back and those scenes in the previous episodes where he's in the imperial mess room and and or in, you know in the dining room and and he's he's eating and he's all alone you know and you see him thinking and that that's those are the episodes which i really liked and with with Cody on there as well and it just makes you wonder what's going to happen to all these clones is it all of them they all going to remember what happened and then just completely change there's going to be something which just takes them all you know no none of them turn out to be stormtroopers I mean what we know Rex is that guy in Return of the Jedi who stands part uh, around the corner on the Endor base with the white beard um that's I think was confirmed to be Rex. So if he's fighting at that age, then there still potentially could be stormtroopers who could be clones. But I like to think that none of them become stormtroopers. And that assassin sniper, maybe he was a one-off, but he had a theme. So I feel like that that's a new form of clones or something like that, or maybe trying to make him the first Imperial stormtrooper. I don't know how they're going to do it, but it's opening up new things new themes um yeah it's, it's very exciting and i'm very much every week i'm really looking forward to bad batch it's a ritual which i watch very late in the evening and we all know what happens at the end of bad batch it's the mandalorian season three and we all know what happens at the end of mandalorian season three it's star wars celebration so yeah it's a really cool exciting star wars things going on Tell me all your thoughts, what you thought about this episode down below, what you love and what you hope to see in further episodes of The Bad Batch. But until next week, I hope you've enjoyed this. Take care of yourself. Remember, the Force will be with you always.